folks, it's George with Imaginomic. In this video, I'm going to show you our new Portraiture 3 plugin that's replacing Portraiture 2. We've made some changes to the interface as well as uh, really increase the speed on it. So we're going to take you through there and show you what we've done with it. We've got a 16-bit Profoto TIFF file here converted from RAW. Going to go to Filter, Imaginomic, Portraiture 3. And what I'm going to do is just start over here on the left-hand side and start drilling down. You probably already noticed that there's some changes here to the interface. Uh, mainly the changes we've done have made it easier to use on larger resolution screens. Uh, so these buttons don't disappear into the screen like they were in the previous versions. We've also added a few little enhancements here as far as the tabs being able to fold up and down by clicking on the arrows beside them. And then we've moved the skin tones mask over here on the left-hand side, where before in Portraiture 2 it was over on the right-hand side. We tried to get as many of the controls on the left-hand side as possible to keep you from having to move your mouse over on the right-hand side, back and forth, back and forth. So starting up here with presets, uh, presets are just like they were in Portraiture 2. There's a list of generic presets that come built into the software. And then you have a list of custom presets. If you've added your own or imported them from somebody else's presets, they'll show up down here in the list below it. The gear icon is where you manage your presets at. It loads the preset manager and it has a preset location where your presets that are over here in this drop down list box are stored at. By default, it'll bring in Portraiture 2 presets if you've had it previously installed on your system. You can click the Browse button, and then you can put the preset location wherever you want it. This comes in handy if you have a network system in your place of business. You can also reset it back to the default. So you would only recommend this in case you've had some kind of a system problem that you need to reset it. Down here, you have checkboxes beside each preset and the group of presets itself. What that's for is once you check the whole group or else just individual ones, you can either delete them or export them. Now, if you want to import presets from somebody else's setup, you can just click on import and then find the preset itself and it'll automatically load into the preset drop-down list box. In the smoothing tab up here, we've got normal, medium, and strong. We put those up there as buttons to make it easier. Just clicking on them without having to pull the presets down will gradually put a little bit more of the effect on the image. Just a quick way of doing it without having to go up and grab a preset and pull it down. Also, on any of these tabs here, the smoothing, skin mask, and enhancements, there's an arrow beside it. If, you, if the arrow is facing to the right, that means you click it and it will load that tab if it's not already visible. I'm going to give you a brief overview of each of the slider settings here in the smoothing section of portraiture. To start with, we're going to come down here to portrait size. What we recommend that you do is just keep it at auto. What auto does is look at the pixel dimensions of the image loaded and will automatically create the best algorithm for it. You can move the slider progressively to the right and you'll start seeing small, medium, and large come up down here and then the numbers will change. We give you this ability because we had it in portraiture too to fine tune the way that the algorithms work on specific sizes of images. Sometimes the algorithm works better on a large scaled image. Sometimes it works better on a small scale image. A small scale image would be something like you're going to put up on Facebook. Large image would be like a large print. What we recommend, though, is that you keep it at auto and let the software take care of itself. We're going to move up here into the slider sections as far as threshold and smoothing because those are the next two most important. Smoothing just determines how much smoothing is being applied to the skin tones mask off all the way on and anywhere in between 100 percent threshold is how much of the skin tones mask is going to be utilized right in the middle that means it's going to use half the pixel values to for all these other sliders to work on generally i recommend that you put it up to 40 percent and let it work on all of the pixels selected then we're going to move up into the fine slider i'm going to switch this over to a single preview and i'm going to zoom in on it to give you a little bit better idea about what's going on at 100 percent so we're going to turn off all the sliders here, fine, medium, and large. And then I'm going to move the fine all the way up. And you'll watch the image here, how it just smooths out the small pore structure of the skin. That's what the fine is for. 
turn it off to see more detail come in there all the way up smooths out the detail now these sliders work in conjunction with each other so you can't just really just move one of them and get the overall best effect so we're just going to double click this to set it back to zero and then we're going to move the medium all the way up and you notice quite a bit more effect come in there because it's working a little bit larger area than the fine structure is as far as the pores go so we're going to double click this one set it back and then the large one is one that we're going to zoom out a little bit because you're not going to see much change when i move the large all the way up you're going to see a little tiny bit of contrast enhancement going on there but not much at all i'm going to go all the way down and there's just a tiny bit of change on it and we're going to go all the way up and it's going to be based on your image content of what's going to be seeing there if there's a lot of contrast changes in it you're going to see it if i turn the auto mask on and select more of the skin tones in there when i move this back down you're going to notice a little bit of difference come in there i'm going to zoom in and if you watch around the snows area here and the back up in here whenever i pull the large slider up you saw just a tiny bit of change here again it's a very subtle thing it's something that generally i recommend leaving that up around plus 20 on there so with that in mind you can always set the settings back to default just by clicking on default and they're going to be go back to default and then you can fine tune them however you want you can see default does a good job there's before and there's after you also see that it does not destroy any of the detail in the eyes or any of the eyelashes or hair or anything and i deliberately chose this image that shows a couple of hairs coming down here into the eye and you can see that one going across there it's not being destroyed there's before and there's after now we're going to move on down into the skin mask area here and this auto mask what that does is that turns the auto mask function on the auto mask is going to automatically select the best range of skin tones for you we generally recommend you just leave it on if you turn it off by clicking on it you have to come down here and use this pick mask color to select a color of the mask and the way that you do that is just click on it and then this mask comes up and then as you move the cursor around over here in the image you'll see the mass change according to where the cursor is so a good starting point is usually right in between the eyes in there and you can see it's got a good selection over here. and as soon as you click it it automatically selects the second dropper which is your expand mass color dropper and then you can add to the mass just by moving around just say you want to add a little bit more of the cheeks in there click on it and there you go and you can just keep clicking and it'll keep adding colors to the mask on it the on part on here what this does is it turns the skin tones mask on and off in other words these are the colors that are selected and these are the colors that are going to be worked on by these sliders if i click it and turn it off it's going to work on the whole image now actually what's cool about it is that you're going to get a really good effect on the whole image with the skin tones mask turned off because it's actually going to work on the hair too and if we pull the fine down a little bit pull this large up pull the threshold up here like this these are some really good settings for this particular button being off and it's going to give you a really good setting on there and it's going to kind of smooth out the hair a little bit as far as the edgy contrast but still retain all of that detail like in the eyes and the individual hairs themselves and we have a lot of people that actually just turn the skin tones mask off and use these settings right here and get really good results with them because you see it still retains the eye detail all the eyelashes all the pore structure and there's before and there's after and of course this is at 100 percent view it's a 50 percent view before and after we'll show you left and right really good deal there and so you can actually just turn it off I'll give it a try and see how that works out for you we're going to turn this back on here and then we go down into these controls here which is feathering opacity and fuzziness generally you don't want to mess with these controls but feathering what that does is that's going to actually feather your mask and what i'm going to do is turn on the mask over here and pull pull it up and you'll see it kind of blurs the edges of the mask so that's what feathering does turn it off you see the mask is real sharp edged opacity what that's going to do at 100 percent it's using only the mask as i start going back with it it's going to start bringing back the original image in there just like a transparent layer mask in photoshop so that means it's blending the original image in with this here live so you'll see what it's going to look like fuzziness is how much of the mask is selected as i go to the left you're going to start seeing the mask get less and less see there okay normally you want to leave it on 100 percent opacity on 100 percent and feathering on zero the show mask button here if you click 
black one here. It's going to show your skin mask on a black background. There's going to be a check mark in it. If you click the white one, it's going to be a check mark in it. It's going to show the mask on a white black ground. This is the first color picker. It has a little eyedropper. You see it over here on the left image in between your eyes. Wherever I move it at, these HSL RGB values change and the mask will update automatically. When you click it, it selects those colors, locks them in to the mask. Then it automatically selects the second dropper, which is expand mask color dropper. And then you can add to the mask. You click it again and there it automatically expands that mask on there. The hue, saturation, and luminance give you the ability to actually generate a mask just based on specific values. So if somebody has a, say, a Caucasian skin tone mask selector up there that allows you to look at HSL values, you could actually go in and generate a pseudo mask or like an artificial mask based on those particular values. But as you can see, as I move them around, it selects more or less of a certain color range based on these values. That's another way you can also fine tune a mask. Latitude, that just means how much of those colors that are selected here are actually going to be utilized. The higher up, the more of them are used. The lower down, you get to where nothing. And as you gradually move it up, you can start fading your mask in and out. So with these settings like this up here, and then using just this latitude alone, you can have a tremendous amount of control over portraiture. Our next tab down here, the Enhancements tab, we start out, the enhancements are either on or off. Now I'm going to go back up here and turn this mask off. Go back down to the Enhancements section. And then I'm going to put the warmth on. And it's going to really warm up the image because I got it maxed out. If I click on on here, that's basically going to say, okay, we're not going to use any enhancements on anything. So sometimes you may want it on, sometimes you may not. So you can, when you're running an action, you say, okay, let's turn everything on. We don't want anything working on there. So on, whatever it's on, whatever the enhancements are set on there, it's going to show up on the skin mask itself. Now, as far as the skin mask, if you have it down to 0%, it's going to work on the whole image. If you bring it up to 100%, it's only going to work on the mask. And you notice the difference there. If I bring it up to 100%, you see it different here because this is what the mask is. If I come back up to the mask itself and I bring the latitude of the mask down, you're going to see these areas over here are going to change. The higher up it is on the latitude, the more that enhancement section is going to work on. We have the custom button here. We put the four most commonly used presets that we had, glamour, tones, high key, and low key. You see there's a glamour look, and we're just going to hit the undo button back here to bring it back. Tint to the right is more yellow. To the left is more magenta. Brightness to the right, higher brightness. To the left, lower brightness. Sometimes you can get some really cool contrast settings there and all just by using the brightness slider. Contrast, more contrast to the right, less contrast to the left. One good use of the contrast slider is that you can take areas of shadow and you can kind of blend them out a little bit just by making a little bit less contrast in the image. You see it's a little bit not as contrasty around the shadow areas in there. It's a real good use of that tool itself. I'm going to move up here to the undo and redo buttons. Undo just backs up one step at a time. The redo moves forward. The drop down arrow here shows a list of the steps that you've done since you've opened up this particular session of portraiture. You can go back and just click on one and it'll reset everything back to those settings. We've also got right click that has basically the same things in here that shows you the different hotkey settings that you can use for various aspects, zooming in and out of the previews here on the window. We got zoom in and out, best fit, various percentage levels. There's the full window, which is the whole image. Split horizontally is top and bottom, which is this button down here. And the split vertically, which is this button down here. Left and right previews on there. I'm going to go back to full window, which is this button here. And then we have the minus and plus self explanatory. We have a drop down that allows you best fit and then different percentage levels up to 400%. Generally, you don't want to get out of 100% because you can see the little jaggies and stuff going on in there. 100% is the actual preview of pixels themselves of the image.
going to go on up here. Got the OK and the cancel. OK, pretty much self-explanatory. You click on it, it's going to process the image. Cancel. It's just going to cancel. It's not going to apply anything to the image. The I is the info button. You got to check for updates, which is going to go up on the web and check for the updates. We got a license agreement, which is going to show the end user license agreement. And then we have a preferences button here, which brings up the preferences tabs. You got the skin tones mask. Default latitude is this area right down here. When you first start out with the default settings, whatever you set that preference there to is going to start out right here with default. We generally leave it at 40. That's going to give you pretty good overall results to start with. That was in the preferences. That's the default latitude. You can move it up and down, and it will only come into effect next time you restart the plugin. Auto switch to expand mask color. What that means, if you click the first dropper here, click in the image and select a skin tones point, it's going to automatically select this second dropper. If you don't want to do that, you can just uncheck that checkbox right there. The next one is center weighted auto mask. If it's checked on, it means it's going to start the auto mask selection from the exact center and then go out from there. Sometimes that works real good, especially if you have front facing head and shoulder shots. Other times it may not work so good. You'll have to experiment with that. Always show mask preview. What that'll do is that as soon as you open up the skin tones mask area here, this mask preview is going to show up. If it's not turned on, it will only show up after you turn off the auto mask or whenever you click on the first dropper. Our interface, we have the option of uh, silver, that's the old Mac interface, or the black. You can adjust the brightness of the text on there with a the brightness slider. The main preview itself is if the image is in here in a best fit and you've got some border around the image, you can adjust the background of that border. Generally, we say just leave the match background with a max color there. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep the look and feel of this whole graphical user interface to the same nice subdued gray colors that's not hard on your eyes. Then we have the performance tab, and this is for multiprocessors. We put that in there because some people with AMD processors a few years back had some problems with it. We just left it in there. Generally, you should never have to touch it, so just leave it on auto. Reset resets all of the settings on all these three tabs back here back to normal. The last section we're going to get into is the output over here. And we've got three different checkboxes over here. We've got same layer, new layer, and then we've got output mask. For the smoothing effect to work on the same layer, which is the actual original layer that you loaded in there, you just check that one. If you want it to work on only a new layer, in other words, generate a new layer that you loaded in from Photoshop and create a duplicate of it, put it back out there with the smoothing results on it. You want new layer checked. If you want it to create a new layer with an output mask, in other words, you want it to just have this mask right here, you would have new layer with output mask. Well, that's the end of our introduction to Portraiture 3, and we hope you got some good use out of this video.